Many people who suffer from eating disorders report that they have experienced physical, emotional and or sexual abuse prior to developing a disorder. In fact, some studies estimate that as many as 50% of eating disorder sufferers have experienced some type of physical or sexual abuse or assault. While there are certainly many people who experience abuse without developing an eating disorder, such as anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa or binge eating disorder, it is well accepted that trauma can place a person at higher risk. Correlations do not necessarily indicate causes. Abuse is a non-specific risk factor, which means it can lead to many kinds of psychiatric problems, sometimes including eating disorders, but often also including anxiety and depression. If abuse and trauma actually caused eating disorders, then every person suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder will go on to develop an eating disorder. This is simply not the case. However, it may be true that people who are biologically predisposed to eating disorders are likely to have the eating disorder triggered by something as highly emotional and stressful as abuse or any other form of trauma. Abuse during childhood is thought to be especially problematic since children process information in a different way than adults. They are developing their sense of self and their core beliefs about how the world around them works. When someone is told over and over again that they are not loved or that they are a problem, eventually they begin to believe it and take it on as their identity. It is thought that emotional abuse can result in negative beliefs about oneself such as, I am unlovable. It can also result in difficulty in expressing emotions because emotional expression in the past may have resulted in critical or negative responses, setting up this expectation. People who have experienced emotional abuse may struggle with emotions in a way that could lead to chaotic and impulsive behaviours which are most often associated with bulimia nervosa or they may become detached and restricted in their emotions which is associated more with anorexia nervosa. Eating disorder behaviours can be used as a way to numb or escape painful emotions. However, it is also important not to discount traumas experienced during adulthood as they can play a role in the development as well. For many survivors of abuse that develop an eating disorder, there is a belief that the eating disorder is a means of survival for them. Eating disorders are tricky and they have a way of convincing sufferers that the eating disorder behaviours are healthy and required. Much of the time sufferers find that the eating disorder behaviours manage to interweave themselves with any form of emotional stress and therefore appear strongest when stress is present. Whilst it is important to understand that the eating disorder and the trauma are separate issues, they often become linked in the sufferer's understanding of them. Many sufferers feel that the eating disorder is a way that they are able to cope with their trauma and stress. For this reason, many sufferers are scared to give up their eating disorders.